Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Claudia! I'll be there in a minute, Norma. Please sit down. Claudia, I'm not staying. I'm going home, as you very well know. You can't go home and leave me alone. I have no intention of coming between you and your interior decorator. What do you think I am? Just another roll of wallpaper to be stuck up anywhere you two want? We two don't want anything. I haven't even met my interior decorator. I'm sure you'll get along fine and I'd just be in the way. Mommy, you can't go. How are you going to tell him that I don't want him? How am I going to tell him? What makes you think I do such a thing? But I don't want him. That's your privilege, but not my responsibility. If you don't want him, and I must say I think you're rather foolish not to, just tell him. I know, Mama, but how? Well, I could make a few suggestions. You stand where you're standing, and I'll stand where I'm standing, and... I'll be the interior decorator. And you say to me, I'm sorry, Mr... Mr. Hillary. Mr. Hillary, I'm sorry, but just right now, at present, I have no need for your services. And if in the future I do want you, I'll call you up. And then, as Mr. Hillary, I put on my coat and I leave. Mommy, you can't leave now. I won't let you. And that was a dirty trick. A dirty trick? You asked for a demonstration. Now, be serious, Mrs. Brown. How can I tell him that we don't want an interior decorator? I suppose there's a good reason why you can't say just that. Don't you understand? Julia told him we did want him. Does that make a difference? Of course it makes a difference. Well, I I can see this is so complicated that I'm of no possible help to you. I'm going home to feed my parrot. Oh, I wish we'd never given you that parrot. Every time you have to do something you don't want to do, you suddenly start thinking about him. He's a perfect alibi. Well, I'm tired of being your perfect alibi. Besides, I think maybe you ought to have an interior decorator. Now you sound more like Julia. Because I think you ought to have somebody help you. And I know David will want you to. You don't know David at all. He'll feel just the way I do. And the arrival of your friend, Mr. Hillary, isn't going to delay me more than one minute. Please, Mama, when you tell Mr. Hillary we don't want him, please try to be polite. Mrs. Norton, I presume? Mrs. David Norton? Yes, I'm Mrs. Norton. And I bet you're Mr. Hillary. I trust your wages are always so successful, Mrs. Norton. I am he indeed. You're sure it isn't him? I beg your pardon. No, I guess you'd know, wouldn't you? I'm not quite sure. I understand. Mr. Hillary, this is my mother, Mrs. Brown. She was just coming. How do you do, Mrs. Brown? How do you do, Mr. Hillary? I'm afraid my daughter's a trifle confused. She meant to say that I'm just going. But I'm glad to have had this chance to meet you. I'm taking dinner to a cranky friend. I'll see you tomorrow, dear. Oh, it'll only take a moment, Mrs. Brown. Only a few sketches. Oh, that appears to be rather a large folder, Mr. Hillary. Oh, I did bring a few renderings I made for some of my other country clients. The riddles and the frilling heisens and the pines. I'd love to see them some other time. Goodbye, Mr. Hillary. Goodbye, Claudia. Well, Mrs. Norton, so this is your town place. It isn't very big. Is it? Oh, I'm sure you'll be much more comfortable in your new home in Eastbrook. On the River Road, did Mrs. Hartley Norton say? Yes, yes, it is. Delightful part of the world. Did a little place up that way last year for Ethan Frelinghuysen. Thirty-two rooms. Thirty-two rooms? Oh, but some of them were quite small. Well, I'm afraid our house isn't like that at all. Your sister Knowles described it to me. That's what enabled me to make the sketches. Oh, you've made them already? Just a hint of what I'd like to do with this place. I've been screaming to do something like this for years, but my friends insist on settling in such vast and chilly places that I haven't had the chance to try it. You mean you know it's a little place? My dear, I understand it's minuscule. It's what? Minuscule. It's tiny, compact, charming. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, indeed, yes. And I want you to look at these drawings merely as a suggestion, a hazard, a guess, a a mere intuition of the final result. Oh. The final result will always astound you, Mrs. Norton, because once my client has given me an insight into her requirement, I am adamant. You're what? I forbid my ladies to enter my establishment from the day I'm engaged. The final responsibility is mine. 
I want no watering down of my conception, no haggling, no interference. You must trust completely, Mrs. Norton. Will you trust me? Well, I don't know what to say. I mean, do I have to trust you now? It's it, it's getting awfully late, Mr. Hillary. Couldn't we do this some other time? My husband is... Oh, in... husbands. They're the natural peril of my craft, Mrs. Norton. But I anticipate them. Every Hillary house has one husband room. Indestructible, leathery, designed like an old shoe. My husband likes old pipes better. Hello, hello. It's me. David, you're home. So are you. Isn't that nice? So is Mr. Hillary. Oh, is this Mr. Hillary? You might as well introduce us. I'm Channing Hillary. I'm David Norton. How do you do, Mr. Norton? How do you do? I was just about to show Mrs. Norton several suggestions of a shadow of an idea that crossed my mind for your new home in Eastbrook. You mean you're thinking of decorating our house? Your sister-in-law, Mrs. Hartley Norton, suggested that I might be interested. Oh, Mr. Norton, and speaking quite frankly, I rose to the idea like a salmon. Well, I didn't know that uh, Claudia, my wife, had considered having a decorator. My dear Mr. Norton, it's the sort of thing one really doesn't have to consider any more than, than one would have to consider calling the, the doctor in the event of pneumonia. David, I, I meant to... You don't have to apologize, Claudia. As a matter of fact, I was going to suggest it, but I didn't know how you would like the idea. Darling, I'm sorry I didn't get a chance. I mean... It isn't my idea. David, you're a traitor. I thought you'd agree with me. I am not a traitor. I've just uh, been a little worried about your going out and roaming from shop to shop, picking up wallpaper and slip covers. I, I don't think you ought to do things like that just now. But, David, I like bargains. Mr. Norton, I forbid my ladies to enter a shop. Does Heifetz allow his audience to set his tempos? Or will Helen Hayes permit prompting from the seventh row? As a husband, I applaud you. As an architect... I envy you. My dear Mr. Norton, it's really a question of temperament. I terrorize my clientele. You do? I've been known to dash rare china to the floor to silence a client's conversation. <laughs> well, I've often wanted to do that with one of my client's factories. Once we've agreed on a master plan, I want nothing from the householder but money. Well, I, I think this is going to work out just fine. Uh, Claudia, why don't we look at Mr. Hillary's sketches? You mean you really want to do it this way, David? Under the circumstances, I think it's a fine idea. What, what are we waiting for? You don't want me to go around and pick up things and go shopping or anything? Well, darling, I, I don't mean that you wouldn't do it beautifully. I mean with the baby and moving. I think it's a little too much for you. You're sure you don't mean that I wouldn't do it the way you want it? Mr. Hillary, darling, is known as one of the best decorators in New York. My dear Mr. Norton, I've worked also in Florida, Chicago, Kentucky, and California. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Hillary. Let me amend that. He is one of the finest, if not the finest, decorator in the country. But, darling, I'd rather live in a house that you decorated any time. That is, any other time. You mean that, David? I do, and I don't think Mr. Hillary will fail to understand that. Or rather not. Well, well, I think it's going to be wonderful to have Mr. Hillary do the decorating then, because there were some things that I really didn't know what to do about. Ah, problems. I thrive on problems. Well, I'm thinking about the turkeys. You know, David, if we're going to raise turkeys behind the kitchen stove... Turkeys behind the kitchen stove? Oh. Well, we may, mayn't we? And I know they're going to run into the dining room and the living room. And I, I don't know what Mr. Hillary can do for carpets with turkeys pecking on them. Well, that is rather an unusual problem. And then there's that terrible leak in the ceiling over the living room that we can't do anything about. What leak is that? Darling, we have to be frank with Mr. Hillary. Don't we, Mr. Hillary? Frankness is an essential. And then there's a cow shed right next to the dining room. I don't know what he's going to do about that. And the Victorian annex that Gerard Tucker's uncle built in 17, 1870? Yes, but he built it very well. It fits right in with the rest of the house. Oh, I know, but I wonder how Mr. Hillary feels about the mixture of colonial and Victorian. Well, the combination is somewhat less happy than tea and scones, or as you would say, scones. No, I think I would say hot biscuits. <laughs> uh, Mr. Hillary, for the first uh, three weeks we had the house, I don't think my wife even noticed it, the combination, I mean. And then how are we going to fix up the guest room so the farmer and his wife can live there, if we can find a couple? But we haven't found a couple yet. Oh, I, I know, but we still would have to have Mr. Hillary design some kind of a, a compromise. How do you feel about compromises, Mr. I Hillary? I detest them. Uh, but, Miss... 
really, it isn't as bad as... In fact, I, I don't then, know then what Then I my... do want more dogs, David, and I insist upon keeping them in the house. In the living room. Oh, my. Poodles, I trust. Great Danes. When Mrs. Hartley Norton described the place to me, I don't think she quite realized... And that then we've the... got to have furniture that the children won't hurt, drapes that the cats can't scratch, upholstery that the dogs can sit on, rugs that the turkeys won't hurt, tables that the chickens won't hurt, chairs that the cows won't break, and... And what are we going to do about the room without windows? I'm afraid there's been something of a misunderstanding. There has? No wonder there has. Mr. Hillary... Uh, heard a picture of this place that I'm Mr. sure Norton, he allow me to interrupt you, sir. A little frankness at this stage of the proceedings is a very valuable commodity. Your sister-in-law has seriously misinformed me. You don't need an interior decorator. Turkeys, chickens, Great Danes, cows, children, mid-Victorians. Mrs. Norton, you don't need a decorator. What you need is an animal tamer. I bid you good afternoon. But Mr. Hillary... And he's temperamental, isn't he? <laughs> temperamental? After the things you said about our house. Whatever made you talk that way? I'll call him back tomorrow, and maybe we can get him to work for us. David. Now what? Come here. Darling, did you mean it when you said you'd rather live in a place that I decorated? Of course I did. But I don't want you to have all the trouble right now. You are a little minx. Me? A I, minx? I knew what you were doing. You were getting your rival decorator out of the way. Because, David, I'm not always going to be having a baby. And just till I can really get it furnished, you wouldn't mind camping out with me on a couple of kitchen chairs and an old table. I'd camp out with you without chairs. Even if we had to eat off the mantel. And then we'll have so much fun decorating it ourselves later on. Darling, if that's what you want, just bring on your mantel. I won't have to, darling, because I know where I can get two marvelous kitchen chairs to start out with. And, David, they're real bargains. Uh oh Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. Delicacies and special tidbits may be hard to come by these days, but there's one special treat that's more plentiful, and it hasn't gone up in price either. I'm referring, as you may have guessed, to Coca-Cola, which still brings you the pause that refreshes for only five cents. Your grocer or service station attendant will be glad to put a case in the car for you. And there are always willing hands to unload that welcome refreshment when you get home. Hello, Mr. King. Yes, Mrs. Brown. Well, I, I guess Claudia managed to get what she wanted again without hurting anybody's feelings. Oh, that daughter of yours seems to have a way of making things come out the way she wants them to. I wish there was some way she could make us get rid of these cold days. Uh, it's been a bad winter, Mrs. Brown. But I can tell you that your daughter will end it tomorrow with a little help from a man named Giuseppe. Between the two of them... Spring weather will be here tomorrow. Just in time for Easter. Well, thanks, Mr. King. I hope you'll recognize me in my new spring hat. Oh, I'll recognize you anywhere, Mrs. Brown. Well, goodbye. And as I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause, the pause that refreshes. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.